On August 27th, one day before the feast of her son St. Augustine, the Catholic Church honors St. Monica, whose holy example and fervent intercession led to one of the most dramatic conversions in Church history. She is remembered and honored in the Catholic and Orthodox churches, albeit on different feast days, for her outstanding Christian virtues, particularly the suffering caused by her husband's adultery and her prayerful life dedicated to the reformation of her son, who wrote extensively of her pious acts and life with her in his famous work, Confessions. Popular Christian legends recall St. Monica weeping every night for her son Augustine. Monica was born into a Catholic family in the year 332 in the North African city of Tagast, located in present-day Algeria. She was raised by a maid servant who taught her the virtues of obedience and temperance. While still relatively young, she married the pagan Patricius, a Roman civil servant with a bad temper and a disdain for his wife's religion. Monica dealt patiently with his distressing behavior, which included infidelity to their marriage vows. It was in this school of suffering that Monica learned patience. It was her custom to wait until her husband's anger had cooled. Only then did she kindly reprimand him. Evil-minded servants had prejudiced her mother-in-law against her, but Monica mastered the situation by kindness and sympathy. But she experienced a greater grief when Patricius would not allow their three children, Augustine, Nechevius, and Perpetua, to receive baptism. When Augustine the oldest became sick and was in danger of death, Patricius gave consent for his baptism, but withdrew it when he recovered. Monica's long-suffering patience and prayers eventually helped Patricius to see the error of his ways, and he was baptized into the church one year before his death in 371. Her oldest son, however, soon embraced a way of life and brought her further grief, as he fathered a child out of wedlock in 372. The youthful Augustine caused his mother untold worry by indulging in every type of sin and dissipation. One year later, he began to practice the occult religion of Manichaeism. As a last resort, after all her tears and entreaties had proved fruitless, in her distress and grief, Monica initially shunned her oldest son and forbade him entrance to her home. However, she experienced a mysterious dream that strengthened her hope for Augustine's soul, in which a messenger assured her, Your son is with you. After this experience, which took place around 377, she allowed him back into her home and continued to beg God for his conversion. But this would not take place for another nine years. In the meantime, Monica sought the advice of local clergy, wondering what they might do to persuade her son away from the Manichaean heresy. One bishop who had once belonged to that sect himself assured Monica, saying, Don't worry. It is impossible that the son of such tears should perish. These tears and prayers intensified when Augustine, at the age of 29, abandoned Monica without warning as she passed the night praying in the chapel. When Augustine was planning his journey to Rome, Monica wished to accompany him. He outwitted her, however, and had already embarked when she arrived at the docks. Without saying goodbye to his mother, Augustine boarded a ship bound for Rome, yet even this painful event would serve God's greater purpose as Augustine left to become a teacher in the place where he was destined to become a Catholic. Under the influence of the Bishop of Milan, St. Ambrose, who held his mother in high esteem, Augustine renounced the teaching of the Manichees around 384. Monica followed her son to Milan, and drew encouragement from her son's growing interest in the saintly bishop's preaching. Alone with her grief, but insistent in prayer, Monica witnessed through many years the acute mental and moral struggles of Augustine. His great intellect had to be convinced of the truth of the Catholic Church. He was left to struggle alone. 
St. Ambrose, the only man who could have assisted him, left him entirely to himself in this matter, relying on the prayers of St. Monica. Often when we met, writes St. Augustine, he used to break forth in praise of my Holy Mother, congratulating me on having such a mother, not knowing what a son she had in me, who doubted all things. St. Ambrose knew, in spite of Augustine's conviction to the contrary. But Ambrose was wise in the way of souls, and his wisdom counseled silence. After three years of struggle against his own desires and perplexities, Augustine succumbed to God's grace and was baptized in the year 387. Shortly before her death, Monica shared a profound mystical experience of God with Augustine, who chronicled the event in his work Confessions. Finally, she told him, Son, for myself I have no longer any pleasure in anything in this life. Now that my hopes in this world are satisfied, I do not know what more I want here or why I am here. The only thing I ask of you both, she told Augustine and his brother Nagevius, is that you make remembrance of me at the altar of the Lord, wherever you are. Some months after Augustine's conversion, as mother and son and a small group of friends were making their way back to North Africa to begin living a monastic life, Monica died at the age of 56 in the year 387 in Ostia while awaiting the ship. There she was buried and in time the site of her burial was lost. Later, however, it was rediscovered and her remains were transferred to the Basilica of St. Augustine in Rome where they are now venerated. St. Monica's legacy serves as a reminder for all Christians to never stop praying for those who do not yet know Christ and is venerated as the patron saint of mothers. Placing all our petitions before her today, let us pray. O God, who consoled the sorrowful and who mercifully accepted the motherly tears of St. Monica for the conversion of her son, St. Augustine, grant us through the intercession of them both that we may bitterly regret our sins and find the grace of your pardon through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen.